Le président, please be seated. Vous The court is now back in session. Without further ado, we would like to now hand over to counsels for Mr. Nunchier to continue putting questions to the witness. Nous donnons la parole à la défense de Nunchier, qui pourra poursuivre l'interrogatoire du témoin. Thank you, Mr. President. La défense. Good morning. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Everyone in and around the courtroom again. Bonne après-midi. Toutes les personnes ici présentes. To give everyone, including the witness, a sense of the plans of the defense today. I have discussed with my colleagues, and I plan to continue questioning based until 3 o'clock, perhaps 3.15, then hand over the floor to my colleagues, and we would have a request from the trial chamber, which I understand has already been granted that the Kyushan Pan team will go first to be followed by the Yangtze team afterwards. So that is the roadmap for this afternoon as far as we are concerned and if that is not yet problematic, then we will not be concerned and if that is not problematic, we will proceed with my questioning of the witness. Mr. Hun. Chunli, Monsieur Hun Chunli, before I start my questions, I want to make clear to you that my questions may seem at times difficult to answer. But what I'm trying to establish is your sources of knowledge. How you know certain information and when you found out about this. So I am not trying to indicate that I do not believe you. I'm simply trying to find out what you base your knowledge on. We have spoken about the evacuation of Batambang, and we have spoken about the Lonol soldiers. But you have also testified about the medical personnel at the military hospital, and you have stated that. D'après ce que vous avez déclaré. You understood. It was your understanding that it was the policy of the Khmer Rouge to kill military medical personnel of a certain rank. Very briefly, to confirm, is that indeed what you testified earlier? That you understood that there was a policy to kill military medical personnel of a certain rank. À exécuter les membres du personnel militaire médical à partir d'un certain rang. Response. After the Khmer Rouge troops had entered Batambang Provincial Town, the Khmer Rouge. Killed the thirteen military personnel. First, the Khmer Rouge ont commencé par tuer treize membres du personnel militaire. La défense. Thank you. And did any Khmer Rouge soldier or official that this was a policy of the Khmer Rouge? Or did any Khmer Rouge soldier or official that this was a policy? Des responsables Khmer Rouge ont dit que telle était la politique des Khmer Rouge, à savoir d'exécuter tous les membres du personnel médical militaire. Réponse. Through my experience, Khmer Rouge did not only kill the military medical personnel; they also killed the military militaire. Civilian medical personnel, but that only happened 
on medical civil uh, at a later date mais seulement plus tard i have heard you say that uh, before that they have killed vous avez dit military medical personnel and civilian du personnel médical militaire et civil mais ma question est différente who told you qui or were, you, were you told by anyone vous a dit that it was a si policy vous dit of the Khmer Rouge là d'une politique military des Rouge, medical personnel de did anyone tell you about that policy militaire quelqu'un vous a-t-il fait part d'une hôtel politique response Réponse. this policy was not raised but in real Practical term, or in, in reality, that's what concrètement, we saw happened. Ce qui produit. So, is it fair to say Question. that, peut -on based on what you saw que sur la base happen de ce que vous avez vu around you, autour de you vous, assumed or concluded that there was a policy? Response. I may say that it was part of the Khmer Rouge Je peux policy in executing Rouge, the former military personnel, a uh, former military medical personnel, les anciens and membres du personnel médical the militaire, civilian medical personnel, and other intellectuals and educated civils, people, ainsi que les intellectuels et les gens instruits. In translation, at least, Question. you say that Dans que entendu, these killings vous were part que of a policy of the Khmer Rouge. Rouge. Khmer Rouge. My question remains, is it fair to say that you assumed that there was such a policy based on what you saw happening around sur you? La base des événements dont vous avez était le témoin. Réponse. Response. Response. I think uh, it was wrong to say that I presumed. Il est faux d'affirmer uh, qu'il did did s'agit de There was nothing of speculation de in my statement because I was testifying de before the chamber based on what I saw, and that's what happened vu. all across Cambodia Et at ce that qui time. Arrivé dans tout le Cambodge, I will là. leave this for now. La Perhaps my colleagues Laissons want to follow up on this de côté pour later, but I am conscious of the time. You just Moi stated that this was what was going on in Cambodia, vous avez dit uh, all over Cambodia the time. And I want to quote to you an excerpt from your book that can be found uh, on English ERN 00369675 and Khmer ERN is 00678751 and it is the prologue to your book and you write Voici ce que vous écrivez. And I quote, My book covers only Batambang Mon town and two districts of Batambang province. Batambang in Batambang town, I worked in two Khmer Rouge regional hospitals, the military hospital Rouge, and the civilian hospital. Et civil. I don't know whether in other provinces the Khmer Rouge had called health staff of the old society to work in their hospitals and then had physically eliminated them. Avant de les End of quote. So, here you say that you don't know ici, whether in other provinces si the Khmer Rouge had called Rouge health, the health staff of the old society to work in their hospitals and then had physically eliminated them. Physiquement. Is it fair to say that you are not in a position to comment on what the Khmer Rouge policy was in uh, Cambodia? Au Cambodge, as a country at the time. Tout le pays à Response. Réponse. 
What I was saying was that at Batambang, the Khmer Rouge asked that uh, the medical Batambang, staff les Khmer Rouge um, ont demandé au personnel médical and de travailler dans les hôpitaux. Après quoi, I ces gens ont été exécutés. Executed, Je ne savais pas uh, si ces gens ont tous été exécutés. Execution did take place. En tout cas, ce que je sais, c'est que ces gens ont successivement été exécutés. I'm not talking about la défense. The executions je ne parle pas in at the des moment. exécutions I'm talking about de something different. Je parle autre chose. A few minutes ago, Il you y a quelques instants, that all this vous avez was affirmé part of a policy que tout cela that faisait partie d'une politique in Cambodia, qui avait été mise en œuvre à l'échelle de tout le Cambodge. Just now, I read to you an excerpt je viens in which de vous lire un extrait dans lequel vous-même affirmez whether que vous in ne other saviez provinces, pas si dans d'autres provinces les Khmer Rouges avaient convoqué le personnel médical pour retourner travailler dans les hôpitaux avant d'exécuter ces gens. Is it fair, Mr. Witness, Monsieur to say le témoin, that you cannot peut-on dire comment que vous n'êtes pas en mesure de faire des observations in place sur la politique in Cambodia qui at the time. existait au Cambodge à l'époque, tout simplement parce que vous n'en avez pas été le témoin, you were vous n'en avez pas connu, puisque these, vous uh, êtes resté à Batambang, Batambang et dans ces deux districts de la province de Batambang. Response. Réponse. You are correct uh, to say that, and as what I wrote Effectivement, in my ce book, écrit dans I mon knew livre. that in Batambang, the medical Je staff were asked to work, le but later on executed. A été à I travailler, don't know whether these incidents ensuite, also happened ces gens elsewhere, ont été as it did in Batambang. Je ne sais pas si ailleurs les choses se sont déroulées Thank comme you. à Batambang. La défense. Merci. Yesterday, you spoke about the staff Hier, at the civilian hospital vous avez parlé du personnel and, de l'hôpital uh, civil you stated and you've stated this again today vous that avez dit uh, et vous l'avez répété aujourd'hui medical staff at the civilian hospitals were executed des hôpitaux civils avaient été exécutés à compter de l'année 1977 you have already stated that you personally vous never witnessed an execution. Jamais été personnellement le témoin Today, you also commented that some vous avez of these people, aussi dit some of these staff members, que certains de were ces membres du personnel uh, either sent to work in the fields été soit envoyés travailler or dans les champs, disappeared. Soit avaient disparu. Is it possible that some of the medical staff Se que that was taken away de ces du or that was removed from the hospitals after 1977 was not executed, pas été executed, but, for example, mais was relocated aient, to exemple, work in the fields or possibly dans les champs, escaped the country after the fall of the Khmer Rouge? se soit échappé du pays après la chute des Khmer Rouges. Response. Réponse. As to the civil, civilian medical personnel, Ce qui est du these people were asked to civil, work as a il a été dit à ces gens qu'ils devaient travailler comme médecins district level. dans There les hôpitaux de district. Offices Il y avait where quatre bureaux these people were asked to work. où ces gens ont And été on the 30th invités à exercer. Of January 1977, l'ordre a été the new donné location. de And transférer on the ces gens uh, on the 31st, à the following day, et le lendemain, le 31, had been, tout le monde uh, était parti to the new places, and vers le nouvel endroit. To go to the nous avons dû And later on, we learned that each of them disappeared one after another, and the two of whom, whose names uh, 
appeared Deux on the list of the prisoner at S21 was indicated this morning. Some people had uh, been asked to treat sick people, but they never returned. Malades, I learned about this because their spouses who survived the regime told me that uh, their husbands would never come leur back. Qui ont au et qui dit que leur mari Thank you. And La then, Merci. Um, moving on to another disappearance Je passe of Mr. Siu Heng. Disparition, celle de um, Heng. In your book, Dans when you speak about livre, Mr. Siu Heng on page Khmer Year and 0067758 and English Year and 0039682, you state we received no more information but mouth to ear news spreading in the town. We heard that in Bat Kor commune next to Batamang town. The Khmer Rouge soldiers Nous collected into a military truck Mr. Siu Heng, who lay hemiplegic at Khmer home, Rouge and drove him away on the national road Batambang Pailin. So you speak of mouth to ear news. And the same with the disappearance of uh, Mr. Akar Sang. De la Char Sang. Uh, you answered initially that um, you had no idea who ordered the disappearance of Mr. Achar Sang. De la de la Char Sang. Is it fair to say that whatever you know about the disappearance of these two individuals, you know because of hearsay, because of word of mouth communications, mouth to ear in your response. Response. On the 17th of April 1975, we heard a radio broadcast from Phnom Penh concerning what being said uh, on this. But a few days later, I had no access to such a Phnom Penh radio channel anymore because there was no such a reception. Car, uh, il plus de and uh, I heard about this uh, on uh, based on word of mouth, and it proves to be correct. Siu Heng's wife was taken away, La femme and de that uh, Khmer Rouge asked me to work at hospital P2, and on. In the afternoon, or at noon rather, I would uh, pay a visit to Siu Heng's midi, house je suis allé and met uh, his Heng wife et with children, sa children at home. Et ses enfants. With regard to Acha Sang, he was also taken Quant away, Sang, but I did not donné. know who ordered uh, his removal. You say you did not know who ordered, Question. ordered his vous removal. Que vous ne savez pas qui qu um, soit yesterday, you later stated that you later learned I, or hier, that vous avez dit it was an order vous avez or of, that it was an order of the Upper echelon. Is it fair to say that since you did not know que who had ordered vous ne saviez pas qui the avait donné removal of Achar Sang, Sang, that you're also speculating? Vous or assuming 
des conjectures lorsque vous parlez de ceux qui ont donné l'ordre qu'il soit retiré. Réponse. I didn't assume at all. Il ne s'agit pas de conjectures. But the fact is that the order was made Le from the upper echelon. People would just supérieur. tell you that they did not know about this, Les gens or qu ils they rien. would choose to say that the order Les was made from the upper echelon. Ou les gens décidaient que l'ordre venait de l'échelon supérieur. You did not. Assume at all. Vous dites qu'il ne s'agit pas you said de conjectures. The order Vous dites was made from the upper que l'ordre venait de l'échelon supérieur. Who made the order Qui in the upper echelon a donné cet ordre au niveau de l'échelon supérieur Response. I do not think I know about this, but your question would be Réponse. directed to the Khmer Rouge Je sais trop themselves. Rien. Uh, la question Khmer Rouge même. This language was uh, those used by the Khmer Rouge. C'est eux qui ont employé ce genre de formule. Then, if you question. do not know who ordered si vous ne savez pas the removal qui a donné of Achar San, de retirer la Char San would you not say that you are assuming ne diriez-vous pas que vous émettez des conjectures lorsque vous echelon. dites qu'un ordre a été donné dans ce sens par l'échelon supérieur Response. Réponse. I still understand that it was the order by the Je upper echelon of the Khmer Rouge. Il s'agissait d'un ordre émanant de l'échelon supérieur des Khmer And uh, when it comes to Upper echelon. It is the language the Khmer Rouge use because every time they render a uh, uh, every time they talk to us, they would just uh, refer parlait, to the order and instruction received by the upper echelon. Perhaps they try to evade uh, the responsibility. And every member or every Cambodian citizen during that time learned this. Tous les Cambodgiens very well that uh, any order would have been made by upper echelon because the Khmer Rouge used this term every now and then. Khmer Rouge qui so is it then fair to say that you question. base your answer donc dire on your que votre understanding réponse est of fondée sur la manière the system that was in place during the Khmer Rouge? Compreniez le fonctionnement du système qui était en place sous les Khmer Rouge. Response. Réponse. Yes, it is part of the system applied during the Khmer Rouge. Du qui était à I will le Khmer Rouge. leave this um, topic for now. And move on to the next topic. And that thème. is um, your time at the Deck. Luang Hospital. Le temps que vous avez passé it was in May until July 1975. And um, you describe, and I will paraphrase, that um, Mitsu had ordered que le uh, Sou for all physicians and a small number of nurses and midwives to uh, work in the hospitals et de and um, dans les your friend, Mr. Takvei, uh, asked you to pack vous a and to um, de faire vos go with him back to Batambang and, and to also fetch Dr. Ni Cham. Is that correct? Did indeed Mitsu uh, issue orders to call all physicians and a small number of nurses and midwives to work in the hospitals. Response. Yes, it is correct. People were asked to work at Prek Luong Hospital. Letters were issued from comrade 
Sue une asking me to work at Breck Luo Hospital. However, before I had to work at Breck Luo, I was asked also to uh, get uh, another physician at the village to work with me. And when you say that Question. people were asked to work in uh, a hospital, do you mean medically trained personnel que vous là de that was asked to work at the hospital? Medical? Response. At Prek Luong Hospital, it was a former L'hôpital de high school. Lung était it was a lycée. school for sure. The school was closed. Le lycée avait été uh, fermé. And then they converted the school Et into the hospital and we did not have enough facility or uh, medical equipment for medical. our medical purposes. My question was question. slightly different. Ma question portait sur autre chose. Mitsu ordered Mitsu physicians a donné l'ordre and a small number of nurses que les and midwives et un petit nombre d'infirmières et sages-femmes work in the hospitals. Travailler dans les hôpitaux. You went to Prek Luang Hospital. Vous êtes allé à l'hôpital de Prek Luang. Doctor Ni Cham. Le docteur Ni Cham. Um, came to work in the hospital. Est allé travailler à l'hôpital. Did other doctors Est-ce que come to work d'autres in the hospital sont allés travailler à l'hôpital you? avec vous? Response. At Prek Luong Hospital, I was joined by another physician, Un autre Kung Kung San, whose name also Lung, appeared uh, Kung Kung on the list of the prisoners list at Tuo Sleng. And physician Ni Charm, and a dentist, and a nurse. Altogether, there were four medical personnel. Apart from these four people I knew, the rest was the Khmer Rouge medical staff. Speaking about Pek Luang Hospital, this was a hospital Question. meant for uh, civilians. Am I correct? Pek Luang was a hospital for the civilians, isn't it? Response. Pek Luang Hospital was a district level hospital open to Treat civilians. Du district qui servait à soigner les civils. And you have stated in your book that um, for those patients who were really sick, uh, you ordered the right okay. drugs. Quand vous avez des patients qui étaient très malades, vous... where were these drugs? Found. Vous avez dit que vous prescriviez les bons médicaments, mais où, d'où provenaient ces médicaments I did not know where uh, these medicines were obtained in the first place, uh, but uh, there was a warehouse the medicine warehouse under the supervision of the director of the hospital, but I did not know where they had obtained those medicine from. So, in that Khmer Rouge hospital, you treated patients and you managed to order the right drugs that were meant for civilians. Is that a correct statement as far as Rek Luang Hospital is concerned? That is correct. And 
moving on to um, your time at the military hospital. Hospital P2. You were there in July 1975 until October 1976. Um, do you remember some of the names of the physicians working there with you? Bantop. I uh, had worked at Breitung Hospital for about two months. Then I received a letter from the deputy commander of uh, Sector 3. And this letter uh, designated me uh, to work in a P2 military hospital. And in this uh, particular hospital, I was the only physician over there, and others were Khmer Rouge uh, medic. Les des Khmer Rouge. But as for the uh, personnel of the hospital, uh, they were divided into two groups. One were male uh, medics and uh, medical personnel, and the other were the uh, female uh, medical personnel. But uh, those people were categorized based on the, uh, their uh, family background, for example. Some would be uh, placed in one group uh, who were uh, the uh, sons or daughters of the Khmer Rouge cadres, and others were the uh, sons or daughters of other uh, people, ordinary people. And as for myself, I was assigned to the group of the uh, medical personnel who were from the uh, people's uh, background. And when I was there, I did not hold any position. I was the rank and file personnel over there, and I also consider myself as one of the uh, prisoner myself over there. But uh, at that time, whenever there were any uh, technical uh, problems, for example, when uh, they needed a certain uh, physician in order to treat certain disease, then they would uh, call upon me uh, to examine and treat uh, those uh, patients. I ask you to um, keep your answers a bit short. Time is um, of the essence. So I want Le to move on to a next topic. And you have discussed it briefly in your book, and you have Vous briefly spoken about it on Monday. And it's um, experimental surgery des and you said a few things about the topic Vous yesterday but my question to you today is did you ever enfin, personally sujet, witness experimental surgery by any Khmer Rouge official or medical staff so I am not par, uh, talking about what people have told you. I'm not talking about what you may have read somewhere. I'm talking about whether you Donc, personally si have seen experimental surgery conducted by the Khmer Rouge, or perhaps Rouge. that is a possibility, Ou participated in it. Participé à une telle chirurgie? Yesterday, I also testified on this issue. There was a case when a lady was injected with... I'm going to interrupt you here. We heard what you stated yesterday. My question is simple. Did you personally see experimental surgery being conducted? 
été témoin direct de chirurgie participate in experimental surgery I would like to ask you back. Uh, your question was that whether I uh, saw or witnessed uh, the uh, surgery experiment, but uh, which uh, instance did you refer to? Are you asking me about the lady whom I said yesterday uh, was injected with an anesthetic? Uh, or you were talking about experiment in general, surgical experiment in that time in general. Experimental surgery, as conducted by the Khmer Rouge, uh, and you have spoken about this issue uh, in your book, and it relates to um, experiments that were allegedly conducted with people being operated upon while still alive for training purposes. I never witnessed this experimental surgery, and neither did I participate uh, in this uh, experiment, experiment because I was not, my expertise was not in anesthetic medicine. Thank you. Um, move on to the next topic, and that is um, the, the incident that was also discussed uh, yesterday by the uh, co-prosecutor, and it was uh, at the time where uh, you went with Chan, who was a former teacher of the fine arts, to uh, go to uh, Cet événement où vous avez accompagné Mount Chan, l'ancien professeur Town. de la faculté des Beaux-Arts. And I apologize for the pronunciation, uh, but I want to read a part of this segment uh, to you. It is uh, Khmer Yeren 0039705. My apologies, that's the English Yeren. And the Khmer Yeren is 0067878. And I will read, after lunch I invited Chan to make a stroll along the river back to Mount Rusay town. An old man waved at me. I approached him. What are you doing here? I accompany a band of artists, I replied. Please take this sticky rice cake, he said while handing it to me. We thanked him and continued our way until we reached the National Road 5. Our truck driver was sitting on a big rock near a destroyed bridge. I was embarrassed by a stink smell. Before April 17, 1975, Mang Rusei was a fierce battlefield. Noticing my uncomfortable behavior, the driver said, Many people were killed in this area, and the decomposed bodies are still around. End of quote. And I have a little bit of trouble understanding the passage, so I want to make sure I understand it correctly. Am I correct in understanding that you state that the bodies you smelled, or at least the bad smell that was at that place, were the bodies of soldiers that had been killed in combat before April 17? Yes, um, that is uh, correct. At Mong Rusei, there was one uh, barrack known as Pantis Y, and before 
they uh, took over uh, Batambang city. De... Uh, the Khmer Rouge soldiers de destroyed de de this barrack. La caserne. And the battlefield at that time was very fierce. Even the brick houses in Mong Rusei uh, were damaged by artillery and gunfires. And then they fought uh, their way all the way to Batambang city. And when I uh, was about to reach Donc, a river stream, rivière, I could smell the decomposed uh, body. Uh, bodies. It's thing, and people around me told me that uh, there were uh, dead Et bodies uh, from the uh, fighting, and uh, some of them were not yet removed. That's why. I could smell the thing. And were those bodies belonging to both Lonno soldiers and to former, or sorry, to Lonno soldiers and Khmer Rouge soldiers, as far as you can tell? What I could say was that uh, those eh bien, were uh, the dead bodies dire, of the Lonno soldiers, and some were Khmer Rouge soldiers, and some were even ordinary citizens. Because uh, the battle battlefields in Mong Rusei was fierce, and some Mousse civilians were also killed uh, in that battle. Do you know what happened Question. to those bodies? Do you know whether they were si buried or whether something else enterré, happened to those bodies? Ou leur est autre chose? Réponse, that I did not know. Did you... Question have experience, perhaps as a doctor, what people would do with the bodies of soldiers that died in combat before April 1975, were they all buried in individual graves, or were they perhaps assembled in mass graves. I uh, did not witness uh, how they uh, treated those uh, bodies, but um, by Cambodian uh, tradition, the dead body uh, would be cremated. Uh, generally, a uh, dead body would be cremated in the uh, crematory lot in the pagoda. And do you know whether that happened with all the bodies of soldiers that were killed si cela in combat? Les, tous les corps des soldats morts au combat? I did not know it all, and I did not uh, see everything either at that time. In your book, um, you speak about another event, and uh, it can be found on English here in 00369813, Khmer here in 00. Six, seven, eight, nine, three, two. And you write, uh, another tragic event took place in 1982. It was the infamous strategic K-5 plan that was twice longer than the Khmer Rouge time and took lives of many hundreds of thousands 
of people throughout the country. End of quote. So, according to you, the K5 plan uh, took the lives of many hundreds of thousands of people throughout the country. Do you know where these people were buried? Savez-vous où ces gens ont été enterrés? It seems that you are deviating from the topic because I, if I understand correctly, your question should be uh, within the confines of the 1975 to 1979, and now you are moving to 1972. President, witness needs not answer this question. The question is irrelevant. Mr. Witness, can I ask you who has told you that you need only answer questions within the confines of 1975 to 1979. I know the temporal jurisdiction of this court. That is, the crimes that took place uh, in 1975 uh, through 1979. That's what I have known. But if the president so directs me, si le président me demande de le faire, to respond uh, to the question, I would do so. I will take the direction from the president, uh, and if uh, this is not aux du président. the president, uh, le I have already ruled on this uh, issue. Uh, you question. need not answer Vous to this question because question. it is not within the confines of the current case. In um, documents D140 slash one slash one, which is the un, demographic un, expert report by uh, Eva Thabot, Eva Thabot. Um, Thabot. the following is stated. Il est écrit les it is unquestionable that the data from the DC CAM mass grave mapping are an essential source on victims of the Khmer Rouge regime in Cambodia. Thus, using this data for an estimate of victims not only makes a lot of sense, but is important and needs to be done. It is unquestionable that the vast majority of victims in the mass, in the mass graves, if not all, are Khmer Rouge victims. Also in that report, Eva Thibault states that she is not aware of any other incident in Cambodia, Cambodian history that um, caused massive loss of life. So it is clear that she is not familiar with the K5 episode, which, according to um, his witness, has caused the lives of hundreds of thousands of people. K5 took place especially around the region of Batambang. For that reason, it is likely that people that died in K5 or under the K5 project ended up in mass graves simply because there were hundreds of, or hundreds of thousands of them. So, it is a relevant question, une question tout à fait whether this witness knows where Et these bodies juste de were aux si uh, corps deposed of the K5, K5 victims simply because we need to know what the source is of these bodies in the mass graves, especially around Patambang. So in this exceptional situation, situation a question Et outside the temporal jurisdiction, temporal jurisdiction of this court is appropriate simply because it goes to de la direct de evidence tribunal est it provides car ou est permissible. The, president. the president. Witness Monsieur needs Témoin. not 
answer this question because the defense uh, himself understands it very well and he has also made it clear that uh, it is not within the temporal jurisdiction of the ACC. But I will ask for a better reasoned order then that is not in the temporal jurisdiction. I'm claiming, the defense is claiming that hundreds of thousands of victims were not killed by the Khmer Rouge, but by the K-5 plan instead. An alternative theory, this witness has relevant information, it speaks of hundreds of thousands of people that were killed. It simply is relevant and it is exculpatory, and we need to be allowed to pursue this. And simply pointing at the temporal, temporal jurisdiction will not do in this instance, with all due respect. We have uh, listened to your own explanation that uh, it is outside the temporal jurisdiction of the ECCC. So it is uh, very clear uh, now that uh, it is not relevant. That's why the chambers advise you not to ask any question that is not within the confines of the current case. Uh, you may put the questions that is uh, within uh, the uh, confine of case 002-01. Now the witness is testifying on two aspects, the uh, evacuation as well as the application of local uh, policy. And I made it clear from the outset of the uh, topics uh, of uh, his testimony. So all parties were advised to put the question relevant uh, to these uh, topics with the witness at question. So the question uh, you uh, put just now to the witness is beyond the scope of K002-01. And in addition, it also goes out of the uh, topics that the uh, witness uh, before us may have the capacity to uh, testify before the chamber. Mr. President, I will move on. I will simply for the record state that it is within the knowledge of this witness. He has actually written a book about it. And um, simply being outside the president, you move on. If you do not have any further questions, uh, we may hold over the floor uh, to the other defense team. So move on, please. I will move on to the next topic, <coughs> as I'm prevented from pursuing this sculptory line of questions. Uh, you have stated, Mr. Witness, that uh, the district uh, was far from my location. You were testifying about this when you were describing the uh, structure of the DK regime. And could you provide some explanation as to um, what you mean when you say the district was far from my location? We look at the administri administrative structure of the Khmer Rouge. It goes as a follow. There is a village structure, a commune, district, sector, and zone. At the district level, the district office is far from the village where I resided. That's what I meant. Actually, it was not too far. But the administrative structure that is close to the people was the commune committee. So, did you know what was happening at the district office 
during the democratic Kampuchea pendant la période du Kampuchea démocratique. No, there was no way I could know about it because at that time we did not have the liberty to move around. We uh, could not uh, move out of our uh, village at our own. Otherwise, we would run an inherent risk. So we had to stay uh, in our own village. Thank you. Um, in your book, you speak on two occasions about um, brainwashing by the Vietnamese authorities. And you mention three Cambodian government officials that went on a brainwashing session in Vietnam, and you yourself state that you went to a six-month political training which was just a brainwashing course, and I'm quoting, it was just a brainwashing course, and it can be found on uh, English TRN 00369807, Khmer ERN 00678926. And again, I repeat, 00678926. And also Khmer ERN 00678923. Can you tell us what the Vietnamese tried to teach you in those brainwashing courses? The President, uh, Mr. Pudnes, please hold on. International co-prosecutor, you may now proceed. Your Honours, my, my learned friend is not directing us to a specific passage, but if, if I'm not mistaken, this deals with events uh, well outside the scope of the trial um, and after the democratic Cambodian period. Uh, I see no relevance to this, this line of questioning. I am, Mr. President, will, for the benefit of um, the prosecution, um, read out the relevant passage um, on English ERN 00369814, and it states, um, 1986, after returning from the 10th course of a six-month political training at Paduk, Vietnam, which was just a brainwashing course, I traveled by car to Tonam Sap in Bovel District. Uh, end of quote. And obviously, this is relevant. It, it goes to the credibility of this witness and other witnesses. And the witness indicates that the Vietnamese were in the business of brainwashing, and it related to political issues. We have always maintained that um, part of the reason why the focus of this case is on only these few defendants has been Vietnam's desire, and later the CPP's desire to hold only a few people accountable for these crimes rather than larger parts of the population. In other words, the Vietnamese had an agenda, and that agenda uh, influenced their actions. Uh, and we are not alone in this. David Chandler, in his writings, acknowledges this. And now we hear from this witness, or from his, from his writing, that these Vietnamese have been involved in political brainwashing, and this is obviously by the credibility of this witness, of other witnesses, and it relates directly to sources of knowledge. We need to know whether the Vietnamese uh, perhaps educated people like this witness on uh, their version of the facts of the 1970s. We need to know whether they were fed information. And here, we have a witness who can testify, who can explain what uh, the agenda of the Vietnamese was and what these brain, brainwashing sessions consisted of. And we are not making up that word. It's the witness that speaks of brainwashing. 
If we have a witness, qui a any witness, witness to any court in the world, si, in the case that témoin, he has attended to brainwashing the courses, it is relevant, it en fait goes to the credibility of this witness, it goes to his sources of knowledge, and the defense must be allowed to further explore this issue. It doesn't get more fresh than brainwashing, I would say. Direct. Sur le sujet du lavage de cerveau. Mr. President, if I may be heard as well, because this issue touches upon us as well, let me just supplement. Uh, the gentleman here has indicated that 25 years after the events, he began writing a book. 25 years. Also in his testimony, he's indicated that he didn't consult any material. This was purely from his, his brain. Uh, he admits in his book of the Vietnamese brainwashing him, or at least attempting to brainwash him, uh, speaking all sorts of things about the Chinese, the Kampuchea crumb and what have you. Uh, now, clearly, we should be able to explore what exactly, what sort of brainwashing might have occurred, because it does, or it may have impacted the way he views things 25 years later when he sits down to, to, uh, to draft. And with respect to the objection that was raised earlier, that we cannot go beyond the temporal jurisdiction, on uh, August uh, 6th, uh, 2012, uh, witness Sun Sukun was asked 2012, to comment or was permitted to, to discuss matters that went beyond 1979. And so, when it is and relevant, the trial chamber has been flexible and has been very realistic in allowing the parties to go beyond the 75 to 79. So I think this is very relevant. It goes to the credibility and the sources of knowledge in writing this book. Thank you. President, uh, international court prosecutor, you may now proceed. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Merci I'm on my feet in light of the additional uh, submissions put forward by my learned friends. Um, if there was a legitimate basis, if there was a legitimate basis to question the witness's bias, to question inconsistencies in his evidence, if there was any shred, however remote, of evidence that his recollections had been affected to this point, we may not have objected. But this is a wild claim that because of alleged policies of other world governments, including China and Vietnam in the 1980s, because of those policies, because of a session this witness actually dismisses as brainwashing, and because of a, of a, of a, of a, of a claim that has basically no foundation in fact, and of course does not present a legitimate defense Il ne s'agit pas d'une défense Nguyen légitime de Nuncia ou de Nguyen Sari. Uh, to, et donc, to explore these types of, la défense uh, ne saurait envisager ce type d'argument. S'il y avait des justifications uh, appropriées, nous n'aurions pas cette objection. Mais la défense peut se contenter de dire, nous, la défense, uh, in, in disons policies, que tel ou tel gouvernement a édicté telle ou telle politique, et dès lors, nous pouvons poser toutes les questions que nous souhaitons à ce témoin a legitimate foundation arises from these ou non des justifications légitimes découlant so de la déposition faite to, depuis um, hier. Nous demandons donc uh, qu'il soit fait droit à notre objection et que la défense soit plus autorisée à poursuivre dans ce sens. La défense, j'aimerais répliquer um, l'accusation répondue à Maître Carnavas très brièvement. Uh, we submit that there is a basis because the basis is the witness states that he has been attending brainwashing sessions and these brainwashing sessions related to political issues. This case is a political case, partly. Second point, it is not just this witness. It is irrelevant for this part of the argument at least whether this witness has been effectively brainwashed. It is important si that brainwashing sessions apparently de took place. The Vietnamese were in the business of brainwashing Cambodians at the time. He writes this in his book. He says that three other officials attended brainwashing sessions in Vietnam. This is not the defense making this up. This is this witness testifying from his own experience. So it is obviously relevant to see what 
exactement these pertinent programs de voir Vietnam en quoi consistait ces programmes de lavage de cerveau au Vietnam. Si le témoin peut l'expliquer, c'est peut-être l'un des rares témoins à pouvoir expliquer en quoi ces lavages de cerveau consistaient, et également pour ces autres officiels. The President, the President Judge Cartwright, you may now proceed. Thank you, President. Uh, uh, the Chamber has um, decided to ask a few questions directly uh, to this witness, uh, and you may be seated while we do that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Powell. Uh, the uh, judges of the trial chamber would like uh, you to confirm that you did indeed use the term brainwashing session. That is the first question. C'est la première question. Response. Your honours. 
in my last in the the book uh, I wrote about what happened as well livre, after 1979. I may wish to refer to the book um, as reference because I may forget the terms I use. Je ne me souviens plus bien des termes que j'ai employés. Permettez-moi de m'y référer. Martin Yes, uh, in 1979, I was assigned to attend a political study session for six months with officials in Phnom Penh and mois. from other parts of the country. It Il was a des political de study session. Une session de and for me, I indeed say that that session is part, more or less like a brainwashing session. session de la de But cerveau. this political session did not influence my writing as uh, what the Council for Mr. Nunti indicated. Well, thank you. That was to be my next question, which was uh, with what, is, what assessment of uh, the impact of this, these sessions do you believe um, uh, they had on you? Uh, and you've I think just vous. answered that. Je pense que vous venez uh, was there any further matter that uh, any judge wished to pursue que les on this? Uh, and I think propos. that the uh, chamber has agreed that um, any questions about the La subject chambre matter of these sessions is irrelevant to the, um, uh, the uh, facts that Avec we are concerned with in case zero Thank you, President. Merci, President. Le président. The President. It is now appropriate time Le for the adjournment. We will adjourn for 15 minutes. The next session will be resumed by 3 o'clock. Court officer is now instructed to assist uh, the witness during this recess. Some chain crouch